These were the three kindreds of the Eldarie, who, passing at length into the uttermost west in the days of the trees, are called the Calaquendi, Elves of the Light. But others of the Eldar there were who set out indeed upon the westward march, but became lost upon the long road, or turned aside, or lingered on the shores of Middle-earth. Swilide Melen, Joisten here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we will be discussing the main houses of the elves in Tolkien's works. Hopefully this video will answer some questions that you all may have about the different factions and kinds of elves, and this should help distinguish the differences between the elves of Rivendell and those of Mirkwood, for instance. Thank you all for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. We must begin with the awakening of the elves in Quivanian, in the year 1050 of the Years of the Trees. At this point in time, one may say that all of the elves were similar. The first born of Iluvatar under the stars. The first elves to awake would find and claim the others for their certain clans. Eventually, in 1085 of the Years of the Trees, Arome, the Huntsman of the Valar, found the elves in Middle-earth and called them the Eldar. The elves that would run from him or not take the journey into the west would not be of the Eldar, but instead they would be the Avari, meaning the Refusers. We'll talk about them more later. The next year, he returned to Valinor and informed his kin of them, which would lead to the war for sake of the elves and the captivity of Melkor. Then from 1101 to 1104 of the Years of the Trees, Rome went back to the elves and invited them to send ambassadors to Valinor who would go and then return to persuade their kin to go live in Valinor, alongside the Valar. These three ambassadors and future kings of the elves would be Ingwe of the Menyar, who would become the Vanyar, Finwe of the Tetyar, who would become the Noldor, and Elwe, or Thingol, of the Nelyar, who would become the Teleri. From here the ambassadors would be the first kings of their kindreds, which we shall dive into individually. Now I know that there are many elven words and names being thrown around, but I'll try to break them down and make this a bit more clear. These groups of elves also would marry and live with one another over the ages, so after the first elves it's safe to assume that all elves had mixed blood between these groups, not being fully of one kindred. But to make things simple, I will generalize in this video a little bit. For example, I would say that Galadriel is more of the Noldor than of the Vanyar, even though she had mixed blood. Let's begin with the people of Ingwe, the Vanyar. Originally called the Menyar, meaning firsts in Quenya, the elves of Ingwe are the rarest and fairest among all of the Eldar in Middle-earth. They were the first elves to awake, and they would reach the shores of Aman and come to the lands of the Valar. They would become known as the Vanyar, meaning the fair ones in Quenya. The Vanyar, along with the Noldor and some of the Teleri, are of the High Elves and the Calaquindi, meaning the Elves of the Light. The Vanyar were in this group, as they saw the light of the two trees in Valinor. The Vanyar, also known as the Fair Elves, the Light Elves, and the Spear Elves, were most attracted to the Holy Lands, rather than the seas, forests, or the crafting of items. Thus these elves never left the lands of the gods, except a fight in the War of Wrath alongside the Valar. But even after the exile of the Noldor, the Vanyar stayed in Valinor, with the Valar, except for Elenwe who is the wife of Turgon, that died during the crossing of the Helcaraxe. These elves were the most pure of the Eldar, as they always distrusted Melkor and knew his evil. They had the greatest skill in poetry of all elves, and they had golden hair, white banners, and were pale of skin. Manwe especially became fond of them, and he was glad that they stayed in Valinor throughout the many ages of Middle-earth after their coming. Ingwe, the king of the Vanyar, is also recognized as the high king of all elves in Middle-earth, as he survived throughout the ages. Besides joining in the War of Wrath and Sauron claiming to be of the Vanyar during his time as Anatar, the Lord of Gifts during the Second Age, the Vanyar are rarely mentioned in the Legendarium. Their homes were the mountain Tani Quitil and Valamar in Valinor. The Vanyar spoke Vanyar in Quenya, a language of the High Elves. Some of their notable members are Imen, the first elf to awake in the Legendarium, his wife Imenye, the High King Ingwe, Indis, Elemirie, Emarie, and others. These elves survived long into the ages of the world, likely for as long as Middle-earth itself survived. Looking now at the Tetyar, meaning the second ones in Quenya, half of those elves would follow Finwe, the father of Feanor, to Valinor, and they would become the Noldor, meaning those with knowledge in Quenya. The Noldor were also known as the Deep Elves. These elves would be of the Calaquendi, 
for they were the High Elves who beheld the light of the two trees of Valinor. The Noldor are some of the most renowned elves throughout the Legendarium, and the Silmarillion especially. They were the most drawn to crafting and the creation of great things. The Silmarils, Palantiri, First Elisar Stone, and many other great artifacts were built by the hands of the Noldor, for they had great skill with metal and gems. Many of the Noldor were servants of Aule the Smith, and they were matched or even sometimes outdone only by the dwarves in the skill of crafting. They stood tall, with dark or even red or silver hair, and white skin, and they were the greatest warriors in Middle-earth. These elves would participate in many of the great events over the ages of the world, and many wars, for they would spread across Middle-earth after the years of the trees. The Noldor would split into many groups, factions, and houses. The House of Finwë would give rise to the houses of Feanor, Fingolfin, and Finarfin. The Seven Sons of Feanor would play major parts in the Silmarillion, both as heroes and villains, but ultimately the sons would meet their ends because they were bound to the Silmarils, which were lost. Only Celebrimbor, Feanor's grandson, would survive the house into the Second Age until his untimely demise. The House of Feanor would be the most infamous house of the Noldor, for they were swallowed by ambition. The House of Fingolfin and its descendants would give rise to many great heroes such as Eärendil, Elrond Half-Elven, Elros, the first king of Numenor, Aragorn Elisar, and Arwen, among many others. As for the third major house of the Noldor, the House of Finarfin, many of these elves would come to sad ends. Finarfin himself would remain in Valinor, being forgiven by the Valar and made king of the Noldor who stayed in that fair land. As for his children, Galadriel would be the only one to survive, but this house produced many major players in the events of the Silmarillion. Now as I said before, the elven houses mixed with one another. For example, Finwë married Indus as his second wife, making Fingolfin, Finarfin, their sisters, and their houses have the blood of the Vanyar within them, though they were counted among the Noldor. It is also disputed in the lore whether Gilgalad was the son of Fingon or Orodreth, which would mean he comes either from the house of Fingolfin or Finarfin. Ultimately, while the houses of Feanor, Fingolfin, and Finarfin, who were the sons of Finwë, would give rise to the Noldor and the other houses within the Noldor, these elves were all kin. The members of the House of Finwë and their followers were High Elves, or the descendants of High Elves, and they predominantly spoke the tongue of Noldorian Quenya, until King Thingol of the Teleri outlawed the tongue in his realm, and it became far less spoken. The Noldor would live all over the world, including but not limited to Tyrion, Hithlim, Gondolin, Nargothrond, Dorthonion, Linden, Arigian, Rivendell, and Lothlorien. Some notable members of the Noldor were Tata, the first of the Tatyar to awake, Finwë, Feanor, Fingolfin, Finarfin, Turgon, Finrod, Gilgalad, Celebrimbor, Glorfindel, Galadriel, and Arendil. Next we come to the Neljar, meaning thirds in Quenya. They were the third and largest house to awake in Quivanian. Most of them would become the Teleri, meaning those who came last in Quenya, and the Lindar, meaning singers in Quenya. This house would mostly consist of elves who remained in Middle-earth but began the journey to Valinor and departed along the way. Some commonalities between these elves would be their love for the sea, forest, and singing. They were elves who typically had dark and silver hair and were tall folk with white or olive skin. Now the Teleri broke into many groups, which I will go through briefly. The Falmari, meaning wave folk, are sea elves who would be the group of Teleri that would go to Valinor and see the Holy Lands and the Two Trees. They would be High Elves and Calaquindi. Their king was Olwë, and they would live in Alqualande and Tol Arisea, and Feanor would attack them during the first kinslaying. Now we look at the Moraquendi, or Dark Elves, that did not go to Valinor and behold the light of the Two Trees. Still speaking of the Teleri Elves, the Sindar, or Grey People, would follow King Elwë or Thingul and remain behind in Beleriand. They would create the Elvish language Sindarin, which would become the dominant Elvish language during a majority of the First Age and after, for Thingul banned the usage of Quenya in his realm after learning about the first kinslaying. The Sindar would often live in forests and be woodsmen, or near the sea and be shipbuilders. They were also excellent singers. Besides the Noldor, the Sindar would play the most significant elven role in the Silmarillion. During the Third Age, one may even argue that these elves and their descendants play the largest role among the elven kindreds. They would live in Doriath and many forests in Middle-earth. The next two kindreds of the Teleri did not go to Valinor or even cross into Beleriand, for they forewent the journey before crossing the Misty Mountains. They were the Nandor and Leia Quendi. 
First, the Nandor, meaning those who go back, included the Sylvan Elves, Quenya for Wood Elves, and they had a love for natural things, and they settled along the Anduin River, before stretching out across Middle-earth and even into East Beleriand. Their king was Lenwe. The Laequendi, or Green Elves, were a subgroup of Wood Elves who would be the Eldar to move into Eriador and Eastern Beleriand, under the leadership of their king Denethor, son of King Lenwe. The Wood Elves and Green Elves would mostly survive the War of Wrath and the destruction of Beleriand, and they would likely mix into the other elven cultures, especially the Sindar. Thus we have the Teleri. They would speak Teleran, Nandoran, and mostly Sindarin, especially from the First Age on. The Teleri and their descendants lived in many notable kingdoms and territories such as Alqualande, Asiriand, Doriath, Mithland, Rivendell, Lothlorien, and Mirkwood, as well as other places. Notable members of the Teleri and their descendants are Enel, the first of the Neljar to awake, King Elwë, King Olwë, Celeborn, Círdan, Lenwë, Luthien, Thranduil, and Legolas, among others. Finally, we come to the Avari. These are the elves who refused the Great Journey, made up of elves from the Tatiar and the Neljar, those who would be the Noldor and the Teleri. There's not much to tell of the Avari, who are more Aquendi or Dark Elves, for they never saw Valinor or its two trees. The Avari are not even counted among the Eldar. They were afraid of Arome and stayed in Middle-earth or even further east. It may have been that many of them were captured by Melkor and turned into orcs. They likely had dark hair and were white of skin, and they spoke Avarin languages. Their leaders were possibly Morwë and Nurwë, members of the Tatyar and Neljar respectively. Some of the Edain, men who journeyed into Beleriand during the First Age, may have learned much from the Avari as well. After the First Age, the Avari mingled with the Nandor Elves, and eventually became kin with the Sindar. By the late Third Age, there were no Avari left west of the Misty Mountains. Some of their homes were Quivanian, Rune, Eriador, and the Vales of the Anduin, among other possible places. And some possible notable members are Morwë and Nurwë. Just like the Petty Dwarves with the Dwarves, the Avari seem to be the most different from the kindred of the Elves in many regards. That brings us to the end of our tale about the houses and kindreds of the elves. Again, there were some generalizations that I made within this video, as almost every elf and every location is made up of different elven houses, and not just one singular kindred. Ultimately, one of the best ways to look at these many elves is through three categories that I haven't mentioned yet. The Amanyar are those of Aman, meaning those who went there. Elwë of the Teleri is the only elf of the Sindar that fits this category for he was one of the three ambassadors to go to Valinor in the first place. The Umanyar are those not of Aman, and the Avamanyar are the elves who would not even attempt the journey to Aman at all. Now I know there's a lot of information in this video, so if you have any questions, let me know in a message or comment, and myself or others will try to answer them as best as we may. I'll also go ahead and timestamp each main group of the Quendi or elves, so you may return to each one to re-watch them if you'd like. Also, if you'd like me to make separate videos so I may go into more detail about these kindreds, just let me know and I'd love to make those videos. From the Houses of the Elves, we see the inner workings and importance of families and relationships. Although we often forget this, we are all related and bound to one another, for we share bonds that go back to the elder days of our world. Thank you all so much for watching, I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and share this with a friend. Let me know your thoughts questions, and corrections about the Houses of the Elves in the comments below. Also, please check out our Facebook, Twitter, and merch, and consider donating to our Patreon. One dollar a month unlocks the channel podcasts and our Discord server. Links to those are in the description. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today. I'll see you all again next week with a video on Tolkien's unfinished book, The New Shadow, that would have been a story taking place after The Lord of the Rings and the Fourth Age. As always, thank you all so much for your support and for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my friends.